Hello. This video is going to be a lot less formal than my usual ones because I think I would like to just show you the extent of my smart home through the Demotics system and how I use Demotics to centrally control all of my smart home and how I found it incredibly beneficial. And for those of you who are just starting out with Demotics, maybe it will give you an idea of the capabilities of the system. I don't use all of it by any means, but I do use uh, quite a lot of it, I have to say. And for those of you who are expert Demotics users, I expect that many of you will bulk at some of the things that I do because I'm probably not doing them incredibly formally. However, it, it really does work for me and I'm really happy with how it's working right now. And who knows, maybe you'll get a bit of inspiration yourselves for, from what we go through here. And I would really like if you wanted to share some of your Demotics experiences, etc., please do so in the form of a video or a comment, etc. That would be great. So let's have a look at my current Demotics setup. So something that is really useful that Demotics does is it stores and retrieves all devices that it finds regardless of whether you intend to use them or not as part of your dashboard or in the switches. And what that means is that as long as you set up the hardware that's attached to the de device on which Demotics is uh, installed, then Demotics just goes ahead and listens all the time to see whether or not any hardware has changed, if you've added any hue bulbs, if you've added any, any 433 MHz devices that it didn't know before and it will store them all in the database straight away ready for you to use. So in many ways you don't even need to manually add switches and lights uh, or other devices. Demotics just natively kind of searches for those types of things and they all appear here on this list. Now as you can see I've got hundreds of entries here because I've been using Demotics for a long time and there are many devices um, in my home which are smart but you start off with a few and trust me after a while of using Demotics you end up with quite a few anyway because you can set Demotics to have dummy switches as well so that um, you can use those dummy switches to work out how to proceed if they're switched on and off etc so you can also add in user variables that are defined by the switches so if it's easier for you to switch something on or off for example if you wanted to switch environmental automation on or off so that fans dehumidifiers heaters etc come off auto on and off automatically it might be easier for you just to set up a dummy switch that's either on or off and if it's on then all the scripts regarding heating and cooling run and if it's off then none of them run now here is the Demotics dashboard which is usually the first icon that you can press on here and this is supposed to give you a one-stop shop for all the devices you use most often day to day. I haven't updated my dashboard in a long time actually because I don't use Demotics as my interface at all. I only come to this these screens when I want to add an extra device or if I want to check the system log etc. I wouldn't come here to change any of the settings or the, the lights, switching them on and off etc. I do that through my own custom HTML. So these haven't been updated for a while but they feed in through here. You can like or, or put down as a preference certain switches or devices and they will appear on your dashboard. So as you can see here I have very many switches They've all been added throughout the lifespan of my smart home since I've had Demotics as the central controller of all of it. There are many, many more devices in, this, in the database which I haven't brought through onto the switches screen because you can switch them off from there. And you can also split the switches into individual rooms or individual topics. So for example here I'm looking at all the switches that I've tagged so to speak as security room and therefore you can see um, at a glance all the sensors that are regarding security. Likewise I can look at environmental uh, information, um, I can look at hallways, whatever. Um, so I'll just run through a few of them. For example here's 
here's a switch which is called leaving now this is the big on off button for me it's either the home or away there are some features in Demotics that can actually help you to choose home and away states however I decided that I would program my own using Lua and that is what is connected to this switch so if leaving is switched on then what happens is most of the devices in the home switch off or go to low power state ready for you to leave but then a timer is set so that the alarm doesn't actually set until five minutes after you've pressed this button so it gives you time to leave the, the property to close the door so that all the sensors kind of have time to reset etc so um, there is a script that's attached to this button likewise when leaving is switched off when you return then devices switch back on the alarm switches off etc notifications are no longer sent to mobile phones when doors are open and PIRs go off etc heating boost is very similar it runs a script which contacts our high heating to initiate a heating boost and what happens with this is that it's quite low tech but it works for me when the heating boost is pressed it does two things it starts a timer for 30 minutes and it also tells the hive to switch on heating boost for 30 minutes after the 30 minutes timer within demotics has elapsed then the heating boost switch turns itself off and the reason why we why I like that is because in the HTML interface you can then check to see whether heating boost is on or off and the user can then get immediate feedback as to whether heating boost is still active or not and therefore as soon as that light goes out on your on your HTML interface you know that the boost has completed so I really like that the idea of that one then we've got some just standard ones such as uh, air purifier that's a very basic one that just switches on and off um, and it's also of course connected to the leaving um, script so that it switches on and off depending on whether anyone is at home or not uh, in, kitchen lights is an interesting one because this is the only set of lights in our whole home that is not hue these are LED candle bulbs that are there are four of them in a spotlight formation on at the top of the kitchen they are connected to a light wave dimmer switch that's that's connected on the wall and so therefore they can be controlled via demotics through the RFX TRX 433 transceiver which is always connected to demotics so they are still controllable but they're the one bugbear that I've got because I if, if it wasn't for them I would be able to have a completely hue home which I'd really like so I'll be working on that so watch this space very similar to the leaving button is night mode and that again does very similar things so this is preparing for night so certain regions of the home are completely switched off um, cameras within certain regions of the home are automatically switched on temperature etc is changed all of that happens within one script uh, so again really really useful of course doorbell so it's whether the doorbell is wrong but there's also a notification attached to that which demotics helps you to do so you can actually send out emails when a doorbell is rung etc i don't have smart doorbell such as ring uh, but at the moment we just have a dumb doorbell that connects via 433 megahertz and Demotics can listen for that doorbell and just send us an email if the doorbell's been rung. We're actually in an apartment complex, so I don't really know what the implications are of having a smart doorbell pointing at a camera at an opposite door. Um, you know, I don't really feel that comfortable with that with that idea, to be honest. Then we've got security alarm, which is what I was saying about connected to the leaving button. So the security alarm activates five minutes after the leaving button has been pressed to switch it on so if on if leaving has been on for five minutes or more security alarm makes sure it's switched on and then whenever the security alarm is on and any sensors go off that are unusual within the home then alerts are sent so again that might be something that i can go through with the with the different types of scripts that I've used. We've got just a few on-offs here like living room camera, Chester room camera, living room TV, monitor, dehumidifier, all that kind of stuff. Multi-cooker is interesting. 
we found that upon returning to the home one day, the multi-cooker was just randomly on and um, it had been on steam mode for a, a, a period of time, we don't know how long, and it was quite warm. So that was kind of a bit weird. So, of course, shoved a smart plug straight onto it, and then whenever we use the multi-cooker now, we have to go to the panel to switch it on, and it switches on for eight hours, and then switches itself off after that. So again, lots of smart Wi-Fi plugs have that built-in function now, um, especially because they are to assist maybe older people or people who are, you know, who, who might forget to switch things off. But I think it's just super useful and it's such a good idea for a smart home to, to say, OK, well, this device is on. Let's face it, if you're switching it on now, you're going to use it now. So I'll switch off after eight hours so that there's no chance that, you know, you're going to burn the place down, basically. So then we've also got environment automa automation and lights automation, which is exactly what I was talking about before, which is the fact that you can switch on the automatic kind of scripts that you've already written yourself all in one go so that you can theme the scripts so that all of my scripts within environment, environmental automation can be switched on or off using this button, which is really useful. And so with lights also, so if that was on, then if the ambient light within certain areas of the home goes below a certain range, then the lights will come on automatically. Uh, if you don't want that on, then you can just switch all of that off with one button. Now, I think that those two are incredibly useful as well. And that might be something that you might find useful to group those two sort of those two um, topics together to um, so that you can switch them on and off at will so of course when you're leaving the property or when it's night then you can switch these two off and then no further action is going to be automatically taken by the smart home on those particular topics which i think is really useful again there's a timed switch here so in times when it's cold we have i've got a heated bed so you can switch that on and after 20 minutes it switches off because you know you don't want you don't necessarily need to have it on all the time and i've got a version of the interface next to my bed anyway so i can always reach over and press it again if i need any more heat i've got some variables here such as this one called dusk now demotics is capable of using the internet to work out when it should be dusk or dawn in your particular geography however I find that if I attach an ambient light sensor to a window and then connect that to, via a script to switch this variable dusk switch on or off, I can then use it to very precisely control when certain lights come on. For example, we have balcony lights and we have other lights that come on at dusk exactly. And if you get sensitive with your ambient light sensors, then you can actually control lights to come on and off when, for example, the sky goes very grey and dark when it's about to rain, etc. Um, and you might find it difficult to read in such circumstances or to get, you know, for if there's a, a very dark room particularly that you use a lot in your home, you may want to connect that via this sort of variable and therefore you get very, very responsive lighting based on your current atmosphere in um, in your particular vicinity there are other loads of other switches etc but they basically do exactly the same thing that i've just been talking to you about so i won't go into every one of them there are passive infrared sensors that are used in security routines there are some old kind of plugs which i've used in the past to to do other videos on um, all sorts of weird and wonderful stuff in here so um, there is plenty there uh, there's also um, other switches which are maintaining scripts behind them for example the nanoleaf canvas i did do a my one of my previous videos very recently on that particular topic so i'm not going to go into that um, and then we also have a couple of switches here i probably should change the icon to phones here because um, they're not actually bulbs are they in fact many things that are shown as bulbs in my demotics aren't bulbs but these are just being pinged 
through Demotics. Again, super useful feature by Demotics to ping given phones and they can then work out who's actually at home. So it's super useful. Next time I'll be looking at why I still find Demotics the most flexible platform in 2019 for home automation. But I hope this quick overview has given you some ideas as to how Demotics can be used in its most basic form to make very complex decisions based on other things that are happening within your smart home. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.